when Daddy was uh, Glee Club director at Randolph-Macon College, Dr. Moreland was the president, and my memories go back to when my grandfather had the Glee Club prior to Daddy, and Dr. Moreland then knew Daddy through that relationship, so it was a good fit, and Daddy was choir director at Duncan Memorial Church at the time, and taught at Henry Clay Ashland High School, which later became Henry Clay High School. Um, all his boys uh, just sat around the piano at our house and would sing. Um, one thing I remember, it, these later years going back to Randolph-Macon, they all wanted to see Daddy at any reunion or homecoming. Um, President Society, Boynt, old grads, which is now Boynton Society. So there are just lots of connections and names that keep coming back. It was special to him because he really loved being with the guys. He had three little girls at home, plus a wife, and he just really enjoyed the, the men. And he really enjoyed teaching he um, was very proud of the programs that they did, and he always kept in touch with them, and were, were glad, was always glad to know that they continued to enjoy music. Um, and, but one of the memories that I have is during World War II, when the college almost just about closed and it was converted into army barracks and daddy sang with those men too so and and they they have gone on to remember the music education that they weren't just training for military they also had this activity bill as i said earlier goes back and i go back to me in about the fifth grade and elementary school, all the guys in the club, in, in the glee club were, and it's, it was a, it's the chorus now, <laughs> it was the glee club then. Uh, you know, we all got to be very good friends. Uh, we were th thrown together every week for at least an hour, maybe two hours for practice. And then we did uh, concerts here and at most of the girls schools in the state. The experience with Bill has enriched my life, so uh, not just from the music side, but uh, he and his wife Christine were just wonderful people, wonderful to be around, and, and uh, yeah, I've really missed him at these gatherings here in the last few years since his death. Uh, mm, just memories flood back with him. One of the things that I remember about singing with Buster was his talent. I loved to sing. I sang in church, I sang in school, but I had never sung in a mixed chorus. And I didn't know Buster. And once I joined, I was blown away. Buster, it turns out, it has perfect pitch. And he would say, okay, altos, I need a D, and he'd whistle it. And I just thought, you, you've got to be kidding me. The man whistles a D. And then somebody, he'll say, go, somebody go hit the piano. And somebody would go to the piano, ding the D, and darn if it wasn't perfect. And I thought, well, this man is just a genius. Well, I think Buster and the music program here, even though it was relatively small, just opened up a huge world for me. I grew up in a household where classical music was not part of what we experienced and so to to be introduced to classical music and also just the idea of singing with an all men's group at that point was pretty remarkable i'd been a part of music programs all of my life through the church but to, to be in a group of guys it just was different to 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 be with a group of 
of men who liked to sing the, the tone of the music, but also just the way we interacted with each other. Um, but it just opened up the world to me, the world of music. And so a lot of music that I listen to now that's classical music, when I hear some of it, it takes me back to being a student at Randolph-Macon and thinking about the first time I heard this. I was a fortunate undergraduate and had some good graduate studies. I played trombone in the Richmond Symphony. So I was exposed to a lot of good music stuff. And I tried to do that kind of music at Randolph-Macon. <laughs> Here's a little aside that I remember. The, the Glee Club was booked into a high school in, down in Tidewater someplace. I don't remember which one. And we were going to do a, a program for their gathered weekly event or whatever it was. We started to sing the Poulonk, Tu Puissant, et cetera. It's a really a strong piece. And some student wag in the back of the auditorium rolled down a empty Coke bottle down the aisle, boom de boom de boom, clack, 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 and it ended up near where I was standing. Of course, the crowd tittered. They thought that was fun. And uh, and so I stopped the glee club where they were had just begun about a minute in, or so into the piece, the Poulonk. Picked up the bottle, set it aside, and told the crowd, I think, I told them something like, Poulonk deserves better than this. We are now going to start all over and start from the beginning. And uh, I don't remember the reaction from the crowd, but I know that a couple of people in the Glee Club um, thought that was a, a very strong statement to make. But looking back, my Glee Club days at Randolph-Macon were for me halcyon. One of my fondest memories um, of being in the choir at Randolph Macon was the choir was at the end of the day and it was always a wonderful time to meet up with your friends, um, enjoy singing, um, enjoying time with Dr. Gordon Brock, our director. We all looked forward to that time at the end of the day to sort of unwind a little bit and be together. One of my fondest memories uh, working with Dr. Brock as his accompanist uh, was our trip to Great Britain. Dr. Brock had a wonderful way of um, making students feel comfortable and enjoy music making. Um, none of us were music majors, but yet uh, he had us doing very, very difficult music that was very gratifying in the end for all of us. Um, and he certainly was a, a formative person in my uh, career choice to, to be a, a professional musician. Um, now I am a choral director at a uh, private school in Richmond, and uh, I don't think that would have happened had I not worked with Dr. Brock during my college years. I think being in the choir at Randolph-Macon was um, a very unique opportunity because at the time there weren't music majors. Um, and so we were all there because we liked to sing. I think it makes you a stronger team player because you've learned to rely on other people and work together as a group and that, that something you would not have been able to accomplish on your own. You have, you have relied on this large group of divergent people um, to pull together and and then you did it, you know, working together as a group. And so I think it, um, it just 
It makes you more of a team player when you've had those kind of experiences. I don't know of anyone who sang for him who didn't admire him, respect him, and love him. He brought out the best in everybody, not just musically, but I think personally as well. But I learned a great deal about how to sing um, from Dr. Brock and, and how to be a good person and part of a group with a common goal and all of us wanting to do our best in large part for, for Brock, as we often called him. One of the things that stands out in my memory about singing in the choir with Dave Greenoggle is that he was very passionate about including students from all disciplines and interests. He didn't want to have a choir of music majors. He wanted to have a choir of people who had interests that covered everything, the whole range of, of um, interests. I remember one time we were singing in the Brock Center and one of the sopranos had to play either softball or lacrosse and she had a game that day and she couldn't be there on time so she just came running in as soon as she could and between songs she stepped up onto the platform and Dave was just thrilled. She was still in her uniform and he just loved the commitment that it demonstrated to people coming together from all different areas of life and creating something special. I sang in choir the whole time I was at Randolph-Macon and from there I went on, I, I decided to major in music and I've gone on to be a choir director and organist at an Episcopal church now and I've loved every minute of it. He loved working with untrained voices and people who came from all areas of life and helping, helping us to come together and create something that was better than any of us could have done individually. When I first came to campus to interview for the position that, that they had the six students that were the choir at that point take me out to dinner was, was one of the things that showed me the value that they place on the students here. And that was one of the things that really piqued my interest. And then in having dinner with those students, just how fired up they were about having a choir here, getting music on campus again, that, uh, that that's, that's what sold me. I thought, if we've, if we've got six people that are this fired up about it, we can do this. I know another one that was, that was a real highlight was the, uh, the end of the, the first year. We were able to get the choir to the National Cathedral in D.C. So between those first two semesters to, to get a critical mass of, of folks that were really interested and wanted to make this thing work, to let them have the experience of singing that kind of literature in the cathedral, that was, that was amazing. That was, that was really cool. A message for my former students. First off, thanks again. This was, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. And it happened because you were the ones that wanted to make it happen. We talked about it then, and I'll just reinforce it now. What you were doing, what you did was incredibly special. It was a point in time in the universe when things came together, and it, it felt it felt magical because it was. And now that it's been these years later, as you remember it, please remember what you felt, what you remember was real. It was special, it was magical. And it was just one of the most absolute privileges of my life to work with you. I'm jacket born and jacket bred. And when I die, I'll be a jacket, dead. These words are familiar to Jackets as we shout in support of our teams and our school. And in their own direct and blunt way, they summarize some important pieces of the college's mission, which includes the following words. The purpose of a Randolph-Macon education is to develop the mind and character of its students. It conveys a sense of life, defined by historical continuity and ethical responsibility. Graduates have the capacity to realize their potential as professionals, leaders, and lifelong learners. 
The comprehensive nature of a Randolph-Macon education prepares students to meet life's challenges with confidence, enthusiasm, and ethical awareness. These qualities of confidence, enthusiasm, and ethical awareness are at the heart of the choir and glee club, which have a history of upholding this mission through the art of choral music, through the act of singing together. Today we celebrate this great history with a look back at the music we've made together for many years. We deliver our tribute wave to those who have gone before us, and we look beyond this day, knowing that even jackets dead live on through our own minds and character. <laughs>